thinking of changing my name to Elton. But that's my name. Yeah, I know. Andrew, thanks for making the time for me to speak because I know this is a busy time for you, especially because this great festival is kicking off as we speak today. How does it feel being able to orchestrate something mm-hmm. that is is great, fantastic, great for the city, and just the fact that people who love films are going to get a chance to see some films they've never had a chance to see before? Well, I mean, it's 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 very exciting to get to this point in the year. You, uh, you know, it's it's we start this process. You know, it, it, we're, I guess yeah. <laughs> how do we even how do we even uh, articulate this? <laughs> uh, it's you know, it takes a year and a village really to to get to this point. Uh, and you know, we have so much fun putting the program together and looking at so many hundreds of submissions and traveling the world uh, to other festivals to to look at other programs and look at. Um, what other filmmakers are doing and curators and it's just it's really special when it comes together um, to celebrate inside out here in the home turf i'm just curious why the name inside out uh well uh inside out that's a good question it uh, it predates me um the festival started back in 1991 uh and so i think it might have been a reference to something i'm not quite sure to be honest with you <laughs> that's okay <laughs> that's yeah. That's okay, but for <laughs> folks who have never gone to this, what do you think mm-hmm. makes this different from other film festivals? Because there's so many film festivals, and Toronto, knock on wood, is lucky enough to have several different types of film festivals. Yeah, so, you know, Inside Out is the third largest festival in Toronto, and Toronto is a festival of festivals, you know, and, and you know, we are number three behind Tiff and Hot Dogs, and we're very fortunate to to have such a position. Uh, but this city, this city is, is they come out for their films and they come out for Inside Out, and it's really special. I think we bring a wonderful flavor of LGBTQ themed work um, and filmmakers at various levels. You know, and just looking at um, being able to bookend the festival with two of the largest films of the summer, Rocket Man and Late Night, uh, is is a testament to the work we're doing and, and to the level of of audience and interest. Uh, in our festival, and I think that you know having larger films like that is great to to help attract people that maybe aren't engaged yet in Inside Out. As we move into our 30th next year in 2020, uh, you know it's great because within that we have 148 other films that are by various other levels of queer filmmakers, emerging levels, and you know they're all here to see their films on green, but also to get some business done. You know, this is a film that is great for networking. We started a financing forum three years ago. It's the world's first and only LGBTQ financing forum that puts queer producers with projects right in front of the deal makers um, to pitch their stories and to try to get those films made and to you know really decrease that gap between a first and second film. Well, I was just going to ask you, how is it broken down then? Do we have the major films? Do we have documentaries? Do we have short films? Yeah, so so we have the film broken up into programming streams. Um, so we have our galas and special presentations. We have our premieres, which are films that are at minimum a Canadian premiere, but most are international, North American, or world premieres. Um, and then we have an icon section, which showcases you know, icons of the community, looking at you know, uh, the documentary Circus of Books that just premiered at Tribeca, um, as well as Halston, um, the Gay Chorus Deep South. Uh, we've got Spotlight on Canada, and then an international showcase in short films. Uh, and what, what I'm really excited about this year is that um, being able to properly launch an episodic section. Uh, we've noticed over the last number of years the things being submitted by or web series or various um, versions of something that is um, made for an online space. And I think what we're noticing is, you know, which is in part why we have the finance form, you know, queer films are still hard to get made, hard to get financed. And so people are getting their stories out any way they can. And so this year just seemed like the right year to really make a proper space to properly showcase that work. Uh, and it's, we're so excited, and we've got the new stars um, season of Vita. Um, we've got Eastsiders premiering season four as well, which was picked up by Netflix. 
Uh, we've got a number of other things like there's an amazing talent, Rain Valdez, a uh, trans woman um, who has a new series called Razor Tongue. Uh, so she'll be premiering the whole series with us as well as doing a panel with some of our creatives after. So, you know, it's it's great to see a festival like ours to be able to embrace work from these various creative spaces because I think it's really important and I think part of us coming from a more left of center and a more subversive place I think in history I think it, it, it allows us the freedom to not be bound by what maybe larger festivals are bound by in terms of how they present work. How is the balance between internationally and Canadian films? Sorry, how the, the balance. I mean, are there more Canadian films than oh. uh, international films? Um, no, there are more international than Canadian. Um, and that is that is part of the reason why we have the finance forum, is to make sure there's more can queer work out there. Uh, you know, we, when over the number of years, I would notice it would be at least five years between a first and second feature for some of these Canadian artists. And so what, in doing this, we're hoping that we can create more queer work from Canada and in Canada uh, and to get out there. So a lot of our Canadian work is at the emerging level or in short film work or documentary. Now, here's the big question, because as you said, to kick off this tonight, how yeah. the you know what did you guys get Rocket Man? Because this is a film everybody is talking about. Uh, it's, I mean, I'll be honest with you. It was, you know, I I was tracking the film for, a number of years and it was in the news more and it just seemed like you know once you heard it was done and I was paying attention and you know it just I heard that there was rumors of it being released in May and I thought the timing sounded good and so I just you know when I saw that it was Paramount Pictures I started to engage them in conversation and um, got them on board and they've been so amazing to work with and then once you know, no one could really commit to anything, I don't think, until the can birth was set. And once that was happening, I think the rollout made sense and the timing was perfect. And then, honestly, there isn't a better film I think, that could kick off Inside Out in May than, than Rocket Man. And I'm, I'm so proud of, of, of us having that film. And I think it's really going to set the stage, uh, literally. For the literally. Movie. Literally, I love that. I know you can't give me the full list, but give me two or three other films that we should probably keep an eye on. Oh, gosh. Um, okay, right out of the gate, um, We Are the Radical Monarchs is a hugely important film. I just played South by Southwest, um, and it's about uh, an alternative to the Girl Scouts. And these two queer women of color created this um, this chapter of the monarch of the monarchs and rather than learning sewing to get their badges they learn about being uh, an lgbtq ally or they learn about black lives matter uh, and it's it's a very i guess powerful film and we have one of the one of the original like women who created um, the monarchs as well as her daughter who's an original member coming to the festival sounds incredible yeah it sounds good pretty amazing <laughs> um, sorry i didn't mean i didn't yeah. mean to make you lose uh lose thought i'm, I'm gonna hold yeah. you on that one because i think this that, that one speaks for itself but because there are going to be so many films um and so many documentaries just so many great things to see and experience where's mm. the website where do we go to get our information uh are there like pa like i don't know uh festival passes anything like that what do we do to get all this type type of information Okay, so we have a box office set up at, in the lobby of the Tiff Spotlight Box on King Street West. As well, you can hop online to insideout.ca and um, check out the schedule, and then you can very easily buy tickets uh, online or buy them in person. And as of today, everything's out there. Looking forward to this. I'm going to be down <laughs> there for Rocket Man, so I cannot oh, wait good. for I'll this. Oh, good. I'll see you there. I'll Thank you, you so much for uh, for for doing this interview with me, but more importantly, thank you to you guys for being able to put together another great film festival for Toronto. Hey, it's, um, you, you've got to love what you do in this industry and, and we couldn't be happier and more passionate about it. So thanks for supporting us. All right. Take care. We'll see you tonight. All right. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.